if you hear the word nanotechnology, what do you think about? What comes to your mind? Molecular motors. That is nanomaterials, nanoscience, of course, the Nobel Prize of 2016. That, that is definitely nanomaterials. Basically, the definition, it is to create new functional materials that are different from the bulk. And the scale is roughly between one and 100 nanometers. You can wonder why is nanotechnology and supermarket chemistry put together? Well, because one of the tools that we can use to make nanostructures is basically supermarket chemistry. So putting molecules together that interact. So in this way, you can view on nanotechnology. The other question is, what is supermarket chemistry? And if I say this word, who invented this? We know that the Nobel Prize of 2016, that was Jean-Pierre Sauvage, Francis Stoddard, and Ben Feringa. So they definitely, well, used supermarket chemistry in their science. But is there somebody, or are there other people maybe that invented it? Or what is it? Do you know who invented supermarket chemistry? Who's the main, who are the main inventors? I think the ones who uh, invented the crown eaters. Exactly, that's Peterson. Peterson invented the crown eaters. He got the Nobel Prize for developing supermarket chemistry together with these people, with Donald Cram, who used especially those uh, cassettes, uh, cafetans. Especially Jean-Marie Lane is well, the most important person in the early supermarket chemistry because he was the one who basically sold it as a concept. He really continued in his career, put a lot of uh, research on it and to, to basically to show that it is a new concept. So he worked on it a lot more. Supermarket chemistry is organization of molecules and also self-organization, and especially Jean-Marie Lane, he sells it as the concept that the molecules are programmed. They are programmed with information for interactions, and it is the intermolecular interactions that are forming the supermolecular chemistry. A molecule is programmed to do something. Within supermolecular chemistry, there's basically three tools that we can use. One of them is templating. So templating is organization of uh, molecular structure. Peterson, he accidentally discovered the formation of these crown eaters, of these round molecules. And because of the potassium, it acted as a template. So the molecule arranges around the potassium and then forms the bond and then forms a cyclic crown eater. But the template is taken away. Yeah? After that, the template is taken away, and that is important for templating. Another important thing is self-assembly. In molecular synthesis, we make covalent bonds. In supermolecular synthesis, we use supermolecular components that interact, that recognize each other through weak interaction. So self-assembly is a tool that we can use from supermolecular chemistry. And the last one, Okay, it is called self-organized growth, self-organization. So that means that we can make molecules interact in a supermolecular way, and these units, we make them interact again. It is a, a secondary organization of supermolecular units that can form a larger structure, and this is an example of self-organized growth. So here we see Two molecules, here's a molecule, there's a molecule. These red lines are hydrogen bonds. If you put them in the right conditions near a surface, they form this, what we call, honeycomb structure. So there's a structure that is made by molecules, by many, many molecules. It is a nanostructure. It's a single molecular layer consisting of many organized molecules. One thing that you have to do is to, 
to connect molecular structure to nanostructure. And you can basically do that, for instance, with a, with a cartoon-like method. You have to recognize the molecule. So in here is given, eh? red is oxygen, blue is nitrogen, gray is carbon, blue is hydrogen. If I ask you, which molecules did they use here? Does anybody have an idea? So there are two molecules. If you put them together, they form hydrogen bonds. And together, these hydrogen bonded units, they formed a network, a two-dimensional network on a surface. Now, what are the molecules? Does anybody know? Is there a molecule you can recognize here? Could you, could you draw the structure? Do you have a pen and paper present at your next to you and write them? Melamine and a perylene bis -imid. If you look at the structure closely, then these are the components. So we have two molecular components. We put them together, they interact, they form this hydrogen bonded structure, but they can do that multiple times. And these units, they can organize on a structure. So that's self-organized growth because you don't have to do anything. But this molecule here is melamine. Some people in China, they used it to make baby milk appear mm -hmm. as if it had more protein. So this is melamine, and this is a, a pyrrolene, but it is a bis imid with NH functions. So these, these units interact with these units to form hydrogen bonds, and they can form a self-organized structure, which can have larger dimensions, which can basically, you can try to see, you will be asked to predict a structure that is formed from components, like you just saw here. And so if I give you these two components, you're supposed to understand from your chemistry background that these can form hydrogen bonds, they can form this structure, then they can form this structure, and then they can form a network. Making larger structures from molecular components, that is something that you will be expected to, to do. So this here is a picture where you see this honeycomb structure interacting with C60 molecules. So these are C60 molecules that are trapped in this honeycomb structure you can use it to do something. Whether it's useful, that's another case, but it is possible to do that. Now, uh, this team had actually this uh, melamine emit hydrogen bonding structure that has been described before. And if you look at it closely, it actually contains three design possibilities because if you block groups on these outsides here, then you get a rosette. If you block only these groups here, then you in principle, and these uh, on, on this side as well, if you put them, uh, if you put a metal group there or something, then you can make a linear organized structure. If you block them, then you can also make a, a Z type structure. So in this way, you can use this interaction motif to make different structures. So this is something similar. It's also an bis imid compound, but then with the naphthalene. So you can imagine that it can form hydrogen bonds like this. And these units can also make structures which are like molecular ribbons. So here we see an example of a molecular stripe, a stripe on a surface that consists of molecules. And you see that the imid makes the nanostructure, but uh, the anhydride, whereas there's an oxygen here instead of an NH, that makes, so it does not contain the organization motif. So it's not organized. But here you see an example of ribbons, molecular ribbons organized by hydrogen bonds. Under the right conditions, you can make molecules interact and form a larger unit. So that is a nanostructure. 